would be pretty tough to claim that the death of Osama bin Laden will help corporate earnings or grow the economy. But a number of strategists are saying it could have an important psychological effect on Americans, making them feel better about the country and thus more likely to spend money and buy stocks. For more, let's bring in Tobias Levkovich. He's the chief U.S. equity strategist for Citigroup. And uh, Tobias, you're pretty straightforward here. Is there any sort of, of real way to quantify a psychological impact, a newfound optimism, or I mean, I, is there think, too much being made? I, mean, I, I think you can look at it either way. One, you could say that this generates some newfound optimism that, you know, if you want to call it the most wanted man in America, was finally uh, caught in Pakistan and, and, and disposed of. Uh, the other side of it is that there could be reprisal attacks attacks and things like that that heighten the, the potential for increased terrorist activity. So I, I think it's kind of a balance. I, I think the market hasn't been this focused on the on the issues of terrorism over the past couple of years. I think in the back of their minds, we've always been worried something could happen and mm -hmm. something could still happen, unfortunately. But um, the market had looked towards different kinds of geopolitical risks. Right. Recently. They were more worried about things like the Jasmine Spring and what that potentially can do to production facilities uh, for oil and what that ultimately means for prices of gasoline. And, and that that is probably a bigger issue. I mean, we're looking at somewhere in the vicinity of a $175 billion increase in gasoline spend for American consumers year over year. And that doesn't change, unfortunately, um, with the uh, you know killing of Osama bin Laden. And yet, on the point with the consumer's ability to spend, we keep talking about what is that, that breaking point. And yet, confidence numbers keep coming up, reflecting a consumer that seems willing to continue to spend despite a higher price at the pump. Well, we, we've argued for a very long time, and, and we've run into a lot of opposition on this over the last few years, that probably the most important dynamic to think about when we, when we perceive consumer spending is not even jobs, it's not uh, energy costs, it's really what's happening in the stock market. Uh, if stock markets go up, it increases the wealth of Americans, and in particular, the top 20% of Americans. Yeah, I was going to say, you you have that that stat that I, I find so fascinating in terms of the percentage of Americans that actually own stocks. How can it truly be a, a, a point of leadership if so few Americans have access? Well, actually, it, it, it isn't so few. I mean, top 20% of Americans, in terms of income, um, also have known about 90% of stocks, and they account for roughly 50% of discretionary spending in the country. Mm -hmm. So they equal the other 80% in terms of their impact economically. I'm not suggesting there are any better people because they have money versus somebody who doesn't, but rather from a pure GDP forecast and from consumer spending fact factors, that does have an uneven influence and, and, and really a very large magnitude. So this is part of what the Fed wanted to achieve with, with uh, quantitative easing. The, the chairman's been pretty clear about the idea of the impact on asset prices, and it really has an impact at home prices. You do warn, though, in your sort of May model, <laughs> as, as you describe it, in terms of market forecast, that there are two things that can trigger some form of correction. Mm -hmm. That's the debate over the de debt ceiling and how dramatic that becomes. And second mm -hmm. is that pullback in, in quantitative easing in June as that ends. There's a what third as well. What's well, there's third? also a third one, which is margin pressures that are, that are building. And I think people tend to focus on commodity prices, and that's actually a, a significant misperception. Commodity prices generally go up and margins go up at the same same time. They don't actually work conversely to each other, even though people talk as if that's fact. If you look back... You're looking at like an energy company or something, but for a, a producer that sells... Oh, sure, but if you look at the aggregate of the it. market, that won't do it, because you're right, the producer of energy will get the benefit, the producer of steel will get the benefit of an increased steel price, the, the user will hurt will get hurt, but if you think about the aggregate of the economy, um, it's not actually a, a pressure point the way we think of it as almost without going through the data. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the assumptions we make are often dangerous if we can't back it up with data. The, the second, you know, going back to the other two that you mentioned rather, um, is yeah, I'm, I'm concerned that the debt ceiling debate can get somewhat rancorous and, and, and nasty as the Republicans really want to push for something important in terms of spending cuts. And we, we kind of think that's a really good idea. If you look at the long-term trajectory of spending, it's a real problem. And you really can't just close the gap mm -hmm. with, with tax rate increases. You've got to do something on spending. So that could get a little bit nasty and unsettling in markets. So and the other one... So that pushes us into July, maybe August mm -hmm. here in terms of the showdown and correction. It, 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 we don't know exactly. The markets could get very unsettled already in July if we're sitting and going for that first week in August or so that the that Secretary Geithner is now suggesting is about as far as he could push right. it. I think markets would be worried if you're t sitting here in the middle of July already. Um, in terms of the 
the issues that the, the other issue that you QE2. mentioned, QE2. I think there's a concern about it. We did a survey of our clients. 89% of our clients are already telling us they don't expect a QE3. So I think a lot of that is already priced into markets. So even though we saw that creeping panic with the end of purchases of mortgage-backed securities by the Fed, you don't expect that. I don't think it's going to be that start. significant. I think it could have a, the margin so what, some five, negative impact. Five yeah. to ten percent. Yeah, correction. we're not talking about a, a bear market. We're talking something in the five seven percent type corrections. All right, Tobias. Thanks so much. It's always good talking to you.